We were in Blaine Lake, Saskatchewan at the Jukabar Dugout House and National Historical Site of Canada. And today is our opening theme day for summer tourism. So today's theme is rumors. We're gonna start uh, our tourism with uh, four rumors, and there's many rumors, but we've chosen four. And uh, we decided to do one about the land claims and the Sons of Freedom, which is a sect off of the Dukabors, because that's such a big thing that all people believe that all Dukabors were part of that Sons of Freedom movement where they disrobed and they protested. We are also going to be bringing Peter Verrigan uh, back uh, to life and um, then we're going to do a reenactment of a Dukabor wedding. But today we're going to choose two people from the audience to renew their vows. We're interactive costume guides, so you're going to meet Tolstoy and Peter Verrigan and various characters uh, within the Dukabor community from the past. I would, you know, it's come back home to history. It's 1899, so we like to be more interactive than just you walking around and looking in buildings. We like to interact with the, the people. And elders tell us that the reason the Dukabors came to this site is because this reminds them of home. The Dukabors have, a, have an interesting history. They were, they were persecuted in Russia for, uh, for burning their arms. So they, their lives were very difficult at that time. The Dukabors were pacifists that were actually kicked out of Russia for their religious belief in thou shalt not kill and the welfare of the world is not worth the life of one child. So they immigrated to Canada in 1899. One of the main events of seeing the, uh, uh, the dugout house is how people came out here and survived. It wasn't just come in here and uh, uh, go into a warm building. You had to survive. Sometimes there were 15 people in one house. Well, it is a provincial and a national historical site, and that's been researched. 300 people lived here in this yard, in the, in, in the sides of the hills. When they immigrated to Canada, there were 7,000 Dukabors, the largest immigration at that time. Um, they settled in Saskatchewan, as the government had given them a land to sow the crops and settle and live communal. And then once government changed hands, they took their land away and sold it. And um, so then the Dukabors had to take allegiance to the flag and purchase their own uh, land. Dukabor land for sale! What do you mean, Dukabor land? That is my land. That's the land promised the Dukabors. Dukabor land for sale! We can't go back to Russia, this is our land. And I think people can't believe, actually myself, I knew they lost their land, but when we did the reenactment about that they actually lose, lost their land, it really touched my heart because they didn't sign and then they didn't know what they were gonna do because they just, it was the biggest land grab in the history of Saskatchewan because this land was 7,000 acres was already broken. So when people were willing to line up and sign, they signed. And that's what happened is we, we here in Saskatchewan, we stayed, we became the independent Dukabors. The Dukabors that went to British Columbia, they were split into two groups. They had a group that was called the Sons of Freedom and they felt that we shouldn't own things, we shouldn't own anything. But here in Saskatchewan, we have always remained independent. We, we signed for our land and we farmed here where they did communally there. There were rumors that uh, all Dukabors were uh, sons of freedom, which they were not. There is a rumor that all Dukabors uh, protested with bombings and nudity. I'm Misha, a sons of freedom, freedomite. I protested against the government. There was 179 Sons of Freedom out of 7,000 Dukabors that believed in this protest. It started in Saskatchewan. They went to the land office every day for two weeks and nobody would talk to them. So the women finally went and by the end of the day they still had nobody to talk to so they took their clothes off and boy did they get talked too fast. So yeah, so that was, that was an issue and that everybody thinks that we all are Sons of Freedom when we all stripped, right? And we did it. There was only a handful. Today, I'm playing Peter Verrigan. Uh, he was bombed, he was uh, assassinated, and uh, nobody knows who did it. Uh, so I'm going to try and uh, play as why he was bombed. I boarded a train, October 29, 1924. It exploded after midnight. 
before his death, Peter felt his death was near, and he visited the villages in, the, in Saskatchewan, including this area. He was taken out, and there was a lot of people killed and hurt in that, and those files are still sealed in the RCMP. It has never been resolved. So that's one thing that, you know, and so did he really get killed? Did he, was, it, was it an accident? And we, as Duke of Bruce, don't believe it was an accident. We believe that he was killed. I like to pick the actors to be descendants because the descendants bring it to life. And it's exciting to get together with them and, and you know, create their own ideas. So I kind of come up with the format, but then I get them to bring their own flavor to it, so their own words. So today, you're going to actually see their own their own words. It wasn't actually a script that was written for them, so they're going to bring their own feelings into the into their acting. I will be officiating a reenactment of a typical Dukabur wedding in short form, so I will be including some participants. We'll be actually getting a couple from the audience who we will renew their vows, and what, what she really wants to show is that we, we take our blessings from the community, from our parents, and it's not just from one official. So with that said, <laughs> the Duke of War weddings are an actual legal thing that we can do in the province of Saskatchewan. Peter McCariff was a Duke of War lawyer and he, he investigated and found a way that we can now, as an elder, I can marry, as long as they have Duke of War uh, heritage, I can marry them. And the Duke of War Act protects us. Uh, we've done different uh, shows, different uh, topics here. We've also come here uh, about 10, 12 years ago uh, singing as a choir, the Dukamore Choir. I've never come here and been disappointed. I've always had a beautiful, uh, interesting day. One year it rained, I sang with my umbrella in the rain. So yeah, we've had a lot of really interesting things here on this grounds. There's so many people that come from all over, not just Saskatchewan, but just all over in other provinces. You know what, you come from a, a history that is a little spicy, not boring and dull. So there's a lot of history here and it, it touches my heart. So when I come here, I just, I just totally enjoy the day. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.